Hello, and welcome to the Sound on Sound recording and mixing podcast channel. I am Eddie Bazil. In this podcast, I'm going to demonstrate how to use delay effects creatively to sound design drum beats and percussive lines into new and exciting textures. Before we jump into the meat of this podcast, let's foray into the world of delay effects and pay homage to one of the longest serving and powerful effects processor of all studio effects, the delay effect. In its most basic form, the process entails taking an audio signal, holding it in temporary memory, and then playing it back after a predetermined time. The user has complete and total control over the time and duration of the delay repetitions. However, the use of delay doesn't end with simple repetitions of a dry signal. Delays are the building blocks of other time-based effects like chorus, flanging and phasing. Without delay, none of these effects would exist. The delay effect is a powerful and versatile effect that has been used in all manner of mixing and sound design situations, most commonly for thickening and modulating vocal lines to widening and deepening static and upfront sounds. But it doesn't end there. Delays can be used rhythmically to induce a sense of motion and impetus for songs that suffer from syncopated and unexciting sounds, be they drum beats, guitar or keyboard lines, and in some cases, entire mixes. The delay effect can add both life and motion to a staid sound. Additionally, because delay is a time-based effect, it can be modulated to create all manner of special effects, and it is this area that I'm going to explore with you and share some very cool tricks in how to add spice and color to existing drum beats. In the first example, I'm going to demonstrate how to use delay as a reverb effect to afford a spatial texture for a drum beat. I will be using Sound Toys Echo Boy, a powerful delay effect with a simple yet well-presented modulation matrix. First, the unprocessed percussive line followed by the faux reverb effect created using the delay effect. And now with the faux reverb effect. The faux or fake reverb effect is easy to replicate using Echo Boy, thanks to its easy to use modulation matrix. The trick is to create a dense sequence of delay repeats and to shape the sequence's response to decay over time. This is achieved using the rhythm echo mode as the modulator. In effect, this creates a sequence of repeats, in this case 16, with the repetition spaced at 2 millisecond intervals. This is determined by the user. Dialing in a zero feedback ensures that only the dense cluster of repeats are heard and not any tails, i.e. additional repeats, that would normally be generated using longer decay times. I have selected decay for the shape function, which allows me to shape the decay of the repeats. I have opted for a simple linear decline for decay so as to expound a smooth decay transition. The result is an uncluttered and clear reverb effect. In the second example, I'm going to stick with Echo Boy and use the same rhythm echo modulator, but this time my aim is to apply depth to a drum break by pushing the snare and percussive elements further back in the mix without losing definition. Here is the drum beat unprocessed. And now with the depth effect. To achieve this deep effect, I'm using the same modulation configuration as in the previous faux reverb example, but this time the delay repetitions have been modified to 3.6 millisecond intervals. The only other notable change is with regards to filtering. Using a narrow band pass ensures that all the low and high frequency content that generally get amplified with filter modulated delays are kept in check so that what is repeated is the range of frequencies that are pushed to the rear. In example three, I'm using FabFilter's Timeless 2, a delay plugin that serves equally well as a mixing tool and as a sound design weapon. 
almost all time-related effects can be created and manipulated using this single processor. It is without a doubt the most versatile and powerful delay plugin available, thanks to an extremely well-defined and detailed modulation matrix. In this example, the aim is to color a drum beat that clearly suffers from a static presence. Motion in all its forms is critical when presenting sounds within a mix, and with this drum beat, a rolling kick drum would lift the whole beat and make it more interesting to the listener. Have a listen to the drum beat unprocessed. And now with the rolling delay effect. When trying to create spatial effects using a delay effect, most notably stereo width, the trick is to use two delay lines or delay instances and to pan one left and the other right. However, this only pans the delays and creates a stereo response. It does not give the illusion of a wider signal. To create stereo width, each delay line should have a slightly different delay time to the other. And in this example, I have the delay sync to tempo, and I have selected eighth note for one delay and 16th note for the other. So long as the delay values are kept to a minimum, the brain does not hear each delay line separately. Instead, it hears both together, but wider. This particular example uses a combination of stereo width and modulated filtering. Using an LFO in sequence mode, much like Echo Boy's rhythm echo mode, and modulating a low pass filter with the cutoff value set to just above the frequency range of the kick, the delay effect is only applied to this specific range. This creates the rolling kick effect. Example 4 demonstrates how to add a crunchy and glitchy effect to a drum beat, and here is the icing on the cake, so to speak, to rhythmically push some of the kick's low frequencies to the sides so as to add interest to a repetitive kick pattern. Here is the dry version. And here is the processed version. To achieve these multiple effects simultaneously, you'd assume that the modulation matrix would be full to the brim with lines of source and destination routings. But in reality, it only requires two lines of routing and two filters to work in isolation and separate to each other. The two delay lines are panned and synced to tempo with one delay line set to half note and the other set to quarter note. This affords a wide response. Two filters are used. One is a low pass filter that targets the kick's frequencies and the other is a high pass filter that is used to glitch the higher frequencies. Each delay line is modulating each filter separately. This results in two separate effects being heard but together. In example 5, the aim is to achieve a shadowing effect. This is not an uncommon effect, it's very similar to creating ghost notes, but with emphasis on manipulating both the volume and filter effects. In fact, ghost notes and ghost effects have always yielded excellent expressive results, and this example is a take on an old and established technique. Have a listen to the dry, unprocessed version. And here is the processed version. Using Timeless 2, it is actually quite easy to route the modulation source and destinations to result in this lovely expressive effect. Low pass and high pass filters are used in series to define the range of filtering and two separate envelope followers are used to modulate the feedback and cross feedback of both delay lines respectively. The delay lines are synced to the host's tempo and both are set to quarter note. When delay is coupled with reverb, a world of new textures can be created. In this sixth and final example, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get musically creative by reshaping existing sounds into new textures with the simple use of delays and reverbs. The aim is to take the following
and to turn it into this. It may sound as if a lot of different sounds are being used in the processed version, but to be honest, there are only five distinct sounds playing. However, one sound, the piano line, has been duplicated twice and sound designed into new textures to afford a different slant on the compositional elements. I often take existing sounds within a mix and represent them in a different light. The fact that the sound being mold is timed perfectly with the piece means we can use any time-dependent processing to alter its color. I will explain what I've done to each and every sound and hopefully you can see and appreciate how easy it is to create both new textures and sequences using simple effects. The only sound not to be processed with any effects is the drum beat. However, some heavy compression has been applied to give the beat a little bounce or pumping. Have a listen to the drum beat. Next comes the snare layer. Here is the dry, unaffected version. And now with all the processing. This snare sound has been heavily processed as it acts as the ambient backdrop to the whole snippet. Using Timeless 2, I've selected only one delay line and synced it to the tempo of the snippet. However, the strange yet evocative delay effect is achieved by using high pass and low pass filter in series and working within a narrow band. Both filters are modulated using a sign shape LFO that is adopting a variable LFO rate. This results in a slapback type of effect that also sounds nice and crunchy. This is then fed into Echo Boy, which is set to a single delay line synced to BPM with an eighth note subdivision value. This accents the slapback effect. Both delays are then fed into Eventide's Mangle Verb Reverb effect, which uses a large size and long decay. However, there is a lot of high frequency boosting and low frequency filtering. This results in a nice sizzle type of color. Next, we have the electric hat sequence. Here is the dry version. And here is the wet affected version. The hat sequence has been treated with timeless two and the idea is to create a static type of effect that rolls along nicely, giving the hat line some movement. Two delay lines are used and both are synced to BPM using quarter note values. Two filters, low pass and high pass, are used in series and both are modulated by two separate envelope followers, with one affecting the filter peaks and the other affecting the delay crossovers. The delay lines are panned hard left and hard right affording wit to the overall sound. Next comes the pad line. Have a listen to eight bars of the dry version. And now the processed version. The pad has been processed with Timeless 2, which adopts two filters, a low pass and a high pass, in series with both filters being modulated with an LFO that has a slow cycle rate of eight bars. This creates the evolving filter opening closing effect. Two delay lines set at quarter and eighth note values, synced to tempo, with each pan hard left and hard right, results in a super wide pan motion. 
and with the filters being modulated across the stereo fill, the perception is that the pad line is moving left to right and back to front. We now have the piano sequence to deal with, and I've opted for a simple cascading delay reverb effect. Here are eight bars of the dry piano line. And now with the processing. The aim is to create a simple cascading delay repeat that opens up into a large space but without any additional reflections provided by the reverb effect. The mighty Echo Boy delay fed into the wonderfully manic eventide black hole reverb delivers in spades. Using the ping pong delay mode with each delay line synced to tempo with half and quarter note delay values and heavily bandpass filtered, the delay sounds as if it is cascading from speaker to speaker. The trick is to have the feedback tailing off gently so that it continues to play in the background even when a new note is hit. This is similar to the shadowing effect we covered earlier in this podcast. Echo Boy is then fed directly into Black Hole, which is using a large space algorithm, but has been configured to have no feedback whatsoever. Pre-delay is set to 100 milliseconds so as to allow the piano's attack transients to shine through unaffected. These settings result in a deep ambient texture, but without the smearing effect a long decay would superimpose on the sound. The mix of dry wet can be automated for further effect, but I felt it didn't need any more motion. Now we can explore the crazy sound design potential of Timeless 2 and Black Hole in its full glory. Next up, and this is where the magic takes place, we have the piano line which has been copied twice with each copy being mauled into a new texture. In the first piano mauling example, Timeless 2 and Black Hole have been used in series to create a synth lead line that stutters through a sea of reverb. This new sound layers nicely with the snare pattern and reinforces the ambient backdrop. Here is the processed piano line. The piano is fed into Timeless 2, which adopts two delay lines and both are synced to tempo using 16th note values. Two filters, a low pass and a high pass, are used in series but with very gentle slopes. Each filter is modulated using two sets of XY controllers, which control the combined filter frequencies and their gains, and a single LFO which governs the feedback of both delay lines. This is what creates the single and repeated hits. This is then fed into Black Hole, which uses a large space algorithm with heavily filtered feedback. Pre-delay is as before, 100 milliseconds. This keeps clarity intact by allowing transients to come through unaffected by the reverb decay and feedback. The final piano mauling example follows next, and to fully appreciate what a little bit of automation can do, have a listen to the line affected and then automate it. And now with the automation. When combined, Timeless 2 and Black Hole are incredibly powerful at creating all manner of sound effects and evolving textures. And in this case, the marriage effortlessly produced a reverse type of choir hit, which adds expression and emotion to a run-of-the-mill musical snippet. The copied piano line is fed into Timeless 2, which adopts two delay lines that are slightly panned left and right, and with 350 millisecond delay values. Q 
Keeping the delay lines free and not sync to tempo subdivisions allows creative control over where and when the repeats should take place. Two filters, a low pass and a high pass, in series, results in the delay response being slightly bandpassed and smooth sounding. Using gentle filter slopes and no filter peaking guarantees there are no resonant jumps during modulation. Two LFOs are used to modulate the filter frequencies and overall wet effect. The first LFO is set to a half a note cycle and the second LFO to a long and evolving eight bar cycle. This ensures the filter frequencies overlap while cycling, which creates the reverse type of effect. LFO1 also modulates the input gain and dry wet mix for the whole effect. This results in the choir hit type of effect. Timeless 2 is then fed into black hole at 100% wet. A large space algorithm is used with an LFO that modulates the reverb with a slow rate, but with acres of depth. By keeping feedback to zero, the modulated reverb effect is heard clearly and comes across as a thickening and thinning of the reverb effect over time. To appreciate all the processes used in this podcast, I will leave the complete sequence to play from intro to finish. That's it for now. Thanks for listening. This has been Eddie Bazil for Sound on Sound. Thank you for listening. And be sure to check out the show notes page for this episode, where you'll find further information along with web links and details of all the other episodes. Oh, and just before you go, let me point you to the soundonsound.com forward slash podcasts website page, where you can explore what's playing on our other channels. 